Hi, Teresa. Good morning. Afternoon, Mike. How are you? <laughs> I'm here. Every day. We've started. Mike, uh, with some of the injuries at wide receiver, how helpful has it been that Robert Woods, you know, with his experience and, and having him not only in that room, but having him on the field this season? Well, I mean, I think he's helped us in a lot of ways. I think he's, um, you know, taken advantage of his opportunities. He's certainly tried to you know, play multiple positions for us and, and some moving parts. And, and we've got other guys that are like that. I think Nick Westbrook can do that. I think Cody can play some multiple spots. So, you know, we'll see kind of where things shake out this week. Which challenge, I guess, might face the team is don't, don't play a whole lot. First time played him since you've been head coach. Uh, we had him here um, a few years ago. But obviously every year is different. Every week is different. Um, you know, just try to get to know him, Jim, just in the personnel you know, who they are, what their style is. And, and um, you know, that's what practice is for. That's what the meetings are about, to, to make sure that we understand, um, you know, what their, their skill set is, what their you know, play style is, and, and predominantly, you know, what, what coverages and fronts and, you know, conceptually uh, what their scheme looks like. What do you think of their front with four first-round picks? I don't know if Young is playing, but so at least three first-round picks there. What, what do you think so, of that? I mean, Nick certainly figured it out a couple of years ago with recruiting interior defensive linemen. Uh, they're fantastic. You know, Payne and Allen, sweat, length. Um, you know, I, but I, you know, Payne and Allen, they just, they got great instincts. They, they play great with their hands, their pad level. Um, they're, they're not just two gappers. Uh, they can disrupt, they can change it up. Um, rarely out of position, uh, rarely on the ground and, and very disruptive. It would be a huge challenge for us. We talked earlier in the week about uh, Mario and Demarcus and kind of sorting, <clears throat> sorting through who has a better week and how, how to distribute the snaps. I imagine they're they're kind of looking at the same role out of your game plan. Are, are you simply plugging guys into the same thing that you guys have drawn up earlier in the earlier in the week and sorting out who's better suited to do this? The well, same? I think we just try to work through everybody and see who's available. See you know, where guys are going to play inside and base defense or whether it's nickel, uh, what the third down, you know, right now we're focused on first and second down um, defense and how we're going to match up and, and making sure that those guys all understand, you know, where it is that they're going to be playing and what they're going to be asked to do. Do you, just, do you tinker with the game plan as you go along if a certain guy's having a better week and his skill set is a bit different? Well, I think that's always something that you could do. Um, you know, you tr you would, you know, hopefully like to, to figure that out earlier in the week so that you're not, you know, I would say wasting reps. Um, but, you know, we'll get a lot of work in today and, and start the preparation and see what we think it looks like. Coach, what are some it, of the things it, that uh, beyond okay. – go ahead. Okay. Uh, sorry. I, does it help to have kind of what you've seen from Carson Wentz last season facing him um, and just the problems that he kind of having this year, um, obviously been sacked 17 times, just taking advantage of that. On right, and, you know, I mean, they have been sacked 17 times. They've also uh, moved the ball down the field very effectively. Um, he's done a, done a great job on third down. Um, you know, so his, his, his play strength in the pocket has, has allowed them to move the football downfield at times. And, you know, they, they mix it up and they'll get it in, you know, McLaurin and Samuel's hands quickly and, and allow those guys to create, but then also, you know, have the ability to, to hold on to it and move the ball down the field. Beyond the interception that he had Sunday, what are some of the things that you've seen out of Tier Tart that's brought his game to another level? It seems like he's holding up really well at the point of attack to allow the linebackers to clean things up. Yeah, I, you know, I think it's just – really just his comfort level and, and the more that he plays and the more that he's with us and, and the things that we ask him to do and the techniques and, uh, you know, maybe the conditioning is improved. And, um, you yeah, know, I think he's got an idea of – a little better idea of what they're doing offensively maybe. Uh, and that's helped him as well as far as just his alignments and, you know, maybe the blocking schemes that they're, that they're doing instead of just attacking and trying to, to be in the backfield. I think he has a much better understanding of – of how he can, you know, effectively make a play. Is he more athletic, maybe, than a lot of guys who are just in the middle as a run stuffer? I mean, I wouldn't base that off of one one interception, but I think that um, he has he has power, he has uh, play strength. I mean, he's one of the strongest players on our team. Um, you know, th there's a burst there, and 
you know, again, I think that um, his comfort level is increasing. Shaheem Carter, and, and is he a guy could potentially factor in this weekend? Everybody, again, that's here could factor. Um, you know, we've been through this, and, and so, but Shy is a guy that, you know, I, I think one, he's a great teammate. I think he, he plays uh, multiple positions. Um, he knows what to do. He helps us on special teams, and, you know, we'll kind of see where he fits in. We've had, you know, we've had him here in the past. What about Sam uh, Oku? I no new. Uh, what do you like about that that, 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 uh, that skill Sam, set and, and what's you know helped you? Or Sa 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 Sam O. Sam, Sam O. o. <laughs> well, I mean, he's, um, you know, he he's earned the right to to be on the fifty three by the way that he's practiced and the way that he's improved and developed. Um, so, you know, we'll continue to try to see where he can help us and, and fit in. But um, you know, he comes work every day with an attitude to. To prepare like he's going to be playing in the game that hasn't happened yet, and we're you know we're hopeful that you know there'll be a role for him here by the end of the week. Does he have anything in particular? Well, I mean, he's not the longest player, but he's got you know really good power, good good quickness, um, and and I think that that he's continuing to learn the game and understand you know blocking schemes and and, and how to take on different things. With practice uh, this week, I mean, what do you hope to see from him? Maybe as he sh as you start that window. Well, I think you know we I think we are confident the way that the return to play has gone uh, on the side, and so we'll see uh, where that is and, and how that translates to you know some of the eleven on eleven and some of the special team stuff. And you know we'll we'll be careful as we work as work him back, but you know by all accounts he's he's excited, he's ready to go, he's conditioned, and feels great. Eric came off the field, he did a TV interview, and he was frustrated with the way you guys played and, and all of that. It, you expressed a different theme, obviously, in the locker room, and he and everybody came out with a, with a different message. Why was that messaging kind of important to you coming off of that? Because game? I know how difficult it is to win in this league on the road. Um, you know, Der Derek's you know, holds himself to a, a high standard, um, which, which I appreciate. You know, I think they all do. And, um, but I also want to, you know, I mean, we, we have to be able to enjoy winning in this league and it, and it's hard and it's, uh, you know, half the league, I told half the league is two and two. And so, you know, we have to continue to improve, um, but there's a lot of good things that happened in the game, which allowed us to win. And there's a lot of things in there that have to, uh, to get corrected for us to win as well. How do you feel Roger McQuarrie has done just handling that physicality from the the nickel spot? Because I know initially that was an area where you wanted to kind of ease him into. Yeah. Well, I don't think it was because of the physicality or the ability to, to go in there and, and tackle. Uh, I think it was just, you know, how much did we want to put on his plate mentally from inside, outside, motion, this adjustment. You know, I think there's a lot of things that change based on that because um, everything that I've viewed, um, I, I think he's been a very willing tackler. You know, made one of the, the best tackles uh, of our season, you know, last week that forced him into, you know, third and 13 or whatever it was at the end of the game, which then Danico got the sack and they missed the field goal. So, you know, that was a tackle on, on Hines out there in space. And uh, so I think that his, his tackling has been good. Uh, we always, you know, we, we, need to, we need to cover better, and that, that goes for everybody. Are officials maybe taking note of his handsy style of play and, and calling that maybe a little bit more? in a way that he needs to be conscious of? What we're going to keep playing the game, it just all depends on what crew you get. I, I mean, really, I go and watch all the other games. It's, it's about the same. Because Scripton uh, uh, plays better this year. Do you, do you give that some credit for some of the, the, you know, the quick starts on the, on the first drives and so forth? Um, you know, I think when we do well, everybody, you know, especially the players, most importantly, should get credit. And when we don't do well, you know, we're all, you know, we all can do better. It's just... You know, I think it's execution, it's it's play design, you know, it, it takes everybody. Todd hinted that that scripting narrative maybe gets overrated because in, in, invariably you get thrown off, off script on that early drive. So it's not as if everything you're doing on that initial scoring drive is according to... No, because there's doing. third downs in there, there's short yardage in there, there's GBOT, uh, you get behind the sticks and, you know, we're, we're going to have to continue to string some some drives together, some some plays together, you know, and convert. You need, you need to. We talk to all the time to to get scoring drives in this league. You have to have some X plays. You're going to have to have some third and fives or third and seven conversions that are that are pretty dirty. Um, 
and then you're going to have to avoid the, the critical mistakes or the critical penalties. And that's, you know, you can look at them. And that's how I break them down. That's how I look at them. And you can look at all our scoring drives. And um, the, the good ones have had all those with, without the, the mistakes and the penalties. And the ones where, you know, we get stalled have had, you know, just mistakes or, or execution. You might have been asked this already, but how do you think Dylan Cole did the other day filling in for Zach? Um, you know, I think that they our inside linebackers played the run uh, as well as I can remember. Um, you know, they were they were filling gaps, they were triggering. Um, so we'll need that this week. They've got three backs that they handed it to last week with, you know, Gibson and McKissick, uh, Williams, and then we'll have to monitor where Robinson is. And you know, he's a good player. We studied him, and he's got good size and. Um, so well, it'll be important for us to know the back in the game and, and how they're trying to use uh, them. And you know, our tackling will be critical this week. And these guys are tough tacklers. I'm sorry. Any change on Hooker uh, going into this week or still in protocol? Or? Uh, still in protocol, but anticipate that he'll be out there today and, and, and working through just the different things that you have to pass through as it relates to practice and activity. You mentioned Robinson. What is the the challenge of trying to plan on how they might use him or how you can match up with him when you really haven't seen NFL tape in the starting offense and trying to plan for that without a ton to go off of? Well, there's plenty of film just of what they're doing. I don't know if they'll change the entire offense. It's, you know, there's a lot of moving parts uh, each and every week, but you know, they'll do a lot before the snap. They'll move guys around, motion. Um, sometimes they'll go fast. Uh, so. You know, we'll have to just be ready and be aware of whatever backs in the game. Is it maybe some trademarks of Ron Rivera coach team, coach teams, and do you see him implementing that in in Washington this year? Well, I mean, I think first and foremost, got nothing but the utmost respect for for Ron and his impact in the, uh, for this league as a player, as a coach, uh, you know, mentor, and um, you know, they're just they're they're physical, they're sound. You know, defensively, very, very, very good. And very, you know, they've got a lot of variations. They bring a lot of different coverages to you, a lot of fronts, different personnel packages that we'll have to deal with. And, you know, offensively, I think like a, a lot of us, I mean, I think they're just, you know, they'd like to run the football, uh, use play action, use Wentz's, you know, play strength to move the ball down the field. And then, you know, like, you know, the Dallas, they made a commitment to it, uh, to, to run the football, some of the other games. Uh, they had gotten behind, and then, you know, therefore it goes in a different direction. But, you know, we have to be ready for a physical football team. Coach Rivera, I talked to him at the combine, and he spoke very highly of you. Uh, what, how did that relationship develop, and, you know, how has that benefited you as, as a coach? Well, you, you know, you go to the meetings, and, um, you know, you kind of just, you know, visit with guys and, and, and hit it off. And, you know, there's a lot of time there to talk about life and, and – you know, coaching and in ways that you can impact your football team, ways that you can help your team. And, you know, he's been through a lot. Some of these guys have, have been around the game much longer than I have. And I'm always trying to find ways to, you know, help our football team, help help our staff, help myself and things that I, you know, try to go through on a, on a daily basis. In the momentum of drives, is there such a thing? Can, can one impact another? Like at the start of games, you guys have, Seemingly, you know, one after another, you guys have scored, and the second half differently. Is, is there a momentum that, that goes from one drive to another that, that impacts things like that at all? I mean, there's definitely momentum in the game. Um, I don't think there's any denying that. Uh, but as an offense or, or as a team, um, your job is to, to take each drive in and of itself, each play in and of itself. You know, it doesn't really matter, you know, what happened in the last play. You have to be able to reset and uh, get ready to go to the next one. So, you know, that's our focus each and every time we take the field. Why do you do that where after a play you sort of have to take a half a second and say, okay, calm down, either, you know, come down or kind of get yourself back up kind of thing, or does that happen naturally? Well, it definitely happens throughout the game, and it's something you're, you're aware of uh, at every position, you know, just being able to, to reset. You know, sometimes we're talking about it in the huddle. Sometimes it, it's on a personal level, um, you know. So, um, yeah, definitely part of the game is being able to, to reset and uh, get ready for the next play. Ryan, if you guys have to be without Traylon for an extended period of time, um, I guess what do you lose when he's not out there, and what are maybe the qualities of the pass catchers, you, you guys, the other ones that you guys have that kind of gives you confidence? Yeah, Traylon's obviously a tough guy to replace, but um, 
gives other guys opportunities. So, you know, whoever ends up stepping in there for us uh, and getting a bigger role uh, was going to have to come up, come up huge for us. So, you know, we have big, strong, physical receivers who can um, use their size and um, strength to, to create some space. So we're going to have to do that moving forward. How's this thing going with uh, your relationship with Josh in terms of getting him up to speed and where you want him to be part of this? Yeah, Josh has been out here for a few weeks now, so uh, I think he's learning, you know, as we go forward, and we'll continue to try to do that, you know, including this week. When you look at the second half, obviously the questions always keep coming about it, but it, it is something where you haven't scored in three games in the second half, and going into, you know, a game like this and then having the bye week, like how much of an emphasis do you guys put on that as an offense to, to be able to, to come out and do, do something there in the second half in terms of points? Yeah, we just want to be consistent, you know, and in everything we do, you know, being – consistent uh, and, and able to, to play good throughout the game. So that's something that we talked about the past few weeks and we'll continue to do so. You're almost a quarter in the season. I mean, what, what do you like about what the offense has done so far? And, you know, aside from the second half issues, what are some things that are going to have to get better for you to take it to another level? Yeah, we just want to continue growing. You know, at this point in the season, uh, you know, Vray was mentioned to us this morning, half the teams in the NFL are two and two. So uh, we found a way to, to win a couple games here in a row. I want to continue to, to stack those wins as we move forward. And to do that, we're going to have to continue to improve um, each and every week You know, moving forward. Um, you mentioned some, some good things we did on offense, or we have done on offense the past few weeks, um, been efficient in, in a lot of areas, and you just need to continue to you know, work on the things we haven't been as clean at. Robert Woods mentioned comfort level as a reason why there's been increased production over the last couple of weeks. From your perspective, what has gone into you know him getting more targets and you guys having more success? He stayed steady. You know I think Robert's done a good job since he got here of, of buying in and um, trying to do everything we were asking of him. And I think you know first couple of weeks maybe just uh, or really the first week, second week he had a, had a good game in my opinion. So he just kind of stayed consistent, stayed uh, on top of his details. And uh, if you're able to do that, you know the ball is going to find you. So. Um, have a lot of confidence throwing him the ball, and hopefully he can continue to get, get himself open. Obviously, there was a lot of history with him, you, you know, just being in the league. Is there anything that, that you've seen from working with him that, that kind of surprised you? Like, oh, wow, I didn't realize that, you know, he brings that to the table. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't know anything specifically. Just a, a veteran presence, like you mentioned, a guy who's played a lot of football, um, understands defenses, understands what we're trying to attack through our scheme. So. Um, that veteran presence in that room has been huge for us. Mike clearly didn't want you guys coming out of the locker room someday expressing frustration about the offense, about the second half, about about that stuff. He 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 was upbeat and he wanted you guys to be upbeat. Do you have a feeling for why his me that messaging was so important to him? We found a way to win the game, and that's what it comes down to: is is winning football games, uh, no matter how they come. Um, find a way to win each and every week. You said you didn't really know what happened at the end of the first half there with the clock stuff in, in, uh, in your comments after the game. After looking at it, what happened there and, and why has the clock management stuff been a, a little bit more suspect this year than it's been historically with you at quarterback? I mean, I wouldn't say that that's the case. Um, maybe that's your opinion, but uh, we had that situation there. Um, Possibility to you know for tackle short of the sticks, run the run the field goal unit on and, and be able to kick the kick the field goal with the running clock. We had enough time on clock that um, that we say we have enough time to get that off. Obviously, we'd like to get the first down and be able to to spike it and um, and stop the clock there, but um, weren't able to execute. It. The evaluation then coming out of that is not that you should have just thrown that out of bounds instead of trying to run there. Well, it's a tricky situation because third and one. You know, um, if it's third and seven or eight, then it makes it a little more clear, you know, you're not going to be able to, uh, to run and get the first down there. Being third and one, you know, kind of had some quick pressure, was able to get up through the pocket in a muddy pocket. Um, thought I was going to be able to get it with my legs and, and just came up short. Veterans kind of sprinkled throughout this Washington defense, but kind of long up front. I mean, just in terms of your passes, it, you know, making sure that you have enough space there with, with what these guys can do with slapping down the ball. They're talented, no doubt about it. Their front is extremely talented. They're big, they're physical. Um, across the board, really, you know, starts inside and, and really moves outside as well. So uh, a front that I have a lot of respect for, that we as a team have a lot of respect for, they're disruptive, um, they rush the passer well, uh, and then you pair that with, with backers who are physical, and um, overall it's just a really physical front. Has scripting been any better, Ryan, this year? Is that one of the reasons, you know, you guys have had the, the really good success in the, in the early drives? 
this year, or what do you, what do you attribute? Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, we've had some good calls, no doubt about it, and um, but we've had good calls throughout the game. At the end of the day, it comes down to to guys. You know, Braves always talks about making the picture come to life, and and we've executed well early in games, and um, we have to do that, you know, throughout the game. Does it make it any more, I guess, puzzling that you've been able to execute so successfully, you know, at the start of games, and then, you know, seemingly different story in the in the second. Uh, I don't know if it's puzzling, but uh, you know something. No doubt, we want to get cleaned up. When you when you evaluate when you went through the second half the other day, what did you come away with in terms of answers for that in in, in your performance in particular? Yeah, we had some had some things we got to get cleaned up in that second half. You know, some of it um, execution, missed some opportunities. Um, you know, across the board. So you know, some of it was myself, some of it was was other guys. You know, but we can't have this sprinkled mistakes. You know, a mistake here, a mistake here, a mistake here. You know, when you add them up, then now we have you know, three drives that were stopped because of mistakes. You know, uh, have to be able to, to play cleaner football. And if we do that, we'll have success. Why is it that those mistakes? How excited do you get when you see the light kind of come on for a young guy like Chig and he's able to make a couple of big plays for you? Well, it's exciting. You know, to see him get in the end zone, just the, uh, the energy, obviously, he, he's brought a lot to the table for us and uh, is a talented player. So. To see him get in the end zone for the first time, I thought his celebration was a little suspect. I was expecting more from him. Uh, no, nah, but, uh, but it was good. You know, uh, I saw him toss the ball, and I'm like, all right, I got to track down that ball for him. I was able to snag it for him. But, uh, but yeah, happy for Chig. Obviously made a big play for us there in the red zone and a couple plays throughout that game. You, you mentioned it comes down to mistakes. I guess the question then would be, why are those mistakes not taking place in the first half and then so regularly taking place in the second half? Where is the disconnect there? that those physical mistakes or those errors that are sprinkled in are really mainly sprinkled in after halftime? I don't think that's true because, you know, we, we have mistakes throughout the game. It's, it's a game of football. It's an imperfect game. Um, sometimes the mistake just happens at a critical point in the play, you know. So uh, it's not like the first half is mistake-free and just because you score a touchdown doesn't mean the drive didn't have mistakes on it, you know. So um, having those critical mistakes, which, you know, heavily impact the play one way or the other, are the ones you have to eliminate.